See, the U.S. market has is is one market that the demand always has been trending upward, right? And it, for for the longest time, people have not understood why that is, right? But the consumption is so much that you will never ever find that demand has either tapered or it is going downward, right? So the direct flights, in my opinion, will open up the market to make it more competitive for producers here, right? Not so much only from a produce perspective, but also from the entire value chain perspective, from a competitive perspective, from a logistics perspective, so that now the challenges that they think that they are facing in terms of the logistics making their produce you know, less competitive to produce, for example, for avocados from Latin America, right? That challenge will go away. And so I think it's, it's very good for both markets. You know, the demand, obviously, on the U.S. side and the supply on Kenya side to be able to, you know, make, make the access of the U.S. market easier for the community here. That's, in my opinion, what I think. So, if you, you know, in, let's, let's talk about, for example, avocados. Avocados, the current consumption of U.S. is about, I want to say, 40 million pounds per week. So imagine, the, you know, imagine what that means in terms of annualized demand. And imagine what that means in terms of both your FOB pricing and your retail pricing, right? Similarly with mangoes, you know, it's almost, uh, I would say, about 800 to 900 million annually. Right? That is the demand we're looking at just in terms of these two product categories. Then if you think about niche products where you're talking about passion fruit, right? You're talking about some of these other niche products that Kenya is able to provide where the premium that you can charge is so much more than you can charge for a mass marketed product. You know, the, the demand is limitless. It's not so, I, you know, in my opinion, it's never a question about the demand when it comes to U.S. market. It's, it's a question about supply. Can you supply consistently at a quality right, that the consumer there would appreciate and would be willing to pay a premium for? That's what, in my opinion, you know, we need to work on today. So there are three things, in my opinion, that farmers need to work on, right? It's, when it comes to the production, in terms of how you're producing the crop, Right? That is one aspect, and there are standards that USDA and APHIS, which is the NPPO for the US, have prescribed for different product categories, right? whether it's for the avocado, whether it's for the mango. Then in terms of the maintenance of the produce, right? in terms of pest control, right? in terms of primarily uh, maintaining or keeping the disease organisms away, uh, I think that is one of the biggest areas of opportunity that I have in my meetings with people here identified as something that the Kenyan producing community has been struggling with in meeting those kind of standards that the U.S. sets, you know, for pest control, for disease control, so on and so forth. And the third, of course, is, you know, the, in my opinion, one of the biggest areas of opportunity is the organic certification, right? To be able to produce all these and to be able to produce, maintain, package and market organically is one of the areas that I think is a great opportunity that the U.S. or the Kenyan community has not fully tapped. The premium that they can charge for organic produce in the U.S. is amazing, right? But I don't think that we have fully here appreciated that. And I think those are some of the standards that we need to look at. I think what Kenya should worry about is upping their game in terms of production. Right? If you can produce at a level that is competitive internationally, if you can produce at a quality level, at a consistency level, such that your produce is available, you know, th throughout the year, or at least close to throughout the year, I don't think Kenya needs to worry about competition from Latin.